Have you found yourself wondering, is there something more? If so, then you, my friend, are a dreamer in waiting. I'd like to welcome you to the Dream On podcast. I'm Julia Gentry, and along with my husband, Travis Gentry, we discuss real, raw, and not small talk conversations about faith, family, entrepreneurship, and all the things that matter most in this life in order to help people bridge the gap between what they currently have and what they really want most. Join us as we give you insights, tools, and strategy to chase every dream that's on the inside of you, but be forewarned. This podcast is not for the faint of heart, but rather those of heart. This is the Dream On Podcast. Here we are. Deep, deep in the forest. Deep in the forest and closer (laughs) to each other than we've been in a long time. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Well, maybe podcast wise. This was my idea because... That way she could sit next to me. My love language is physical touch. So if you're just listening to this, we are in a... Caressing each other in the forest. No, we, <laughs> we are in a, what do you call this? Not a hammock. It's a hammock. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, in the trees. It's a portable hammock. Yeah. Love it. So we're in a hammock in the trees. If you're listening to this, that's what we're talking about. Okay, here we are. We, so. We are going to be talking about, share with us, what are we talking about today? So today we're going to talk about your words matter and what we're specifically meaning is that the power of your words Mm -hmm. even if you are joking or say you're joking because sometimes you'll be talking to someone and they'll say something and then they'll be like oh just joking Mm -hmm. well are they just joking are they is the question or is it truly what they're feeling yeah but it's almost like they're testing the waters to throw it out there and then to pull it back depending on how you respond sure so. Well, and I think that there is, you know, in our life, as you progress in becoming a active participant in your life, you realize how conscious you have to live your life, right? And you don't realize how unconsciously you were living, living before. And I think this is seen in the words that you use, right? Like, and before, you don't even really realize that you're doing it. You don't realize that your words matter. You don't realize that the words have power. You don't realize the impact that it's having on your life and other people's lives until you start to become aware, right? Which is really this first step in any process to becoming better, creating change. Then you start to become aware and you're like, oh my gosh, the power of my words is beyond me. And so we wanted to share with you today really to shine some light on the power of your words and how much your words matter. And we're going to share with you some nuggets of things that you could be saying that's ultimately stopping you from living your dreams. Yes. And these are these are phrases or words mm-hmm. that we hear that instantly, now that we're consciously aware of our words and how much of an impact, you know, because some of these words we I heard growing up or I used to say, And so now when you're aware of them, Mm -hmm. you one, don't want to say them because what you think on the inside and how you feel is a direct correlation to external. Yes. So especially in, you know, results um, as well. So if you, you know, whether it's food and health or um, emotionally, uh, money, especially, that's a big one. Some of your words are exactly how you feel, which then that's how you act, yep. which is the results that you have the fruit in your life. Yep. So basically, we're also going to kind of be a little bit of a crystal ball today because we... So don't say these words. So we can basically <laughs> almost predict where you're going to end up in 5, 10, 15 years if you keep using these words. Um, we're not going to shame you or guilt you because you're saying them. We're, we're going to use this episode as an opportunity to shine some light on the fact that number one, words matter. And number two, here is a whole handful of phrases that you didn't know that you were saying that is actually keeping you from getting to where you want to be most. And you really should stop saying them. And you really should stop saying them. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think you really should stop saying them. So to rethink, okay, when you're saying these words and maybe look from the inside out, okay, if you say some of these phrases or words, why are you Mm -hmm. saying them? Where does it come from? Yep. That's really what I want you to look at because I guarantee pretty much all of these, they're not serving you. Yep. So the, for me, when I really started to look at the power of the words, it's been, 
you know, I've always been a writer. I've been journaling since I was a little kid. I mean, I really, we've moved, um, we, I think we counted it 16 times in the last, since we've been married. We just celebrated our 12th anniversary. And so the we had a baby dedication the same day that we had an anniversary. And um, our friends came to the door and there's a lockbox, which we just have a lockbox on our door. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's because right. Because we, you know, someone's bound to forget to leave the key. We're trying to get four kids in the car and between us and our well, pair, no, someone, pair lives with us. We, someone's going to forget the key or need a key. So we keep a lockbox on there just so we always have entrance of the key. And he, he gets to the door and he was like, are you guys moving again? Like, why is there a lockbox on your door? And so they asked the question, how many times have you moved in the last 12 years since you've been married? And we counted 16 times. Um, and so as we're moving, right, we've sold everything, the whole thing, but my journals continue to come with us. I appreciate my husband for letting my 1200 journals go with us. But this is really when I started to learn the power of words is as I'm in this editing process, even writing my book, every word matters and the definition of these words matter. And I think the reason that words are so powerful as I'm learning this is that there's no biases in our words. Like they are what they are. There's a few couple different iterations of words, right? There's an A version, there's a B version of what it means but a word is a word it means what it means we're the ones that all of a sudden as humans create biases and judgments and opinions and all these things but when you really study the purity and the essence of a word defined whether it's in Hebrew or Greek or in our culture right a word's definition is a word's definition so words matter and they're very black or white right Then the second thing that really appeared to us is when we started naming our children is because we believed that every time we say their name, we're speaking something over them, right? Every time I, because every name also has a meaning. So every time we say Malachi, we're saying messenger. You are a messenger. Every time we say Nixon, his name means victory. So we're saying you are victorious. Every time we say Aslan, right? It means brave lion. So we are basically, and we say their names a lot. <laughs> One, because we love and, their names. And but, you made a good point though. You have to know that though. Yes. You know, like, so if I, the meaning behind it it could be, you know, for Aslan or Nixon, it could mean something totally different. So we know the meaning. Yes. So we like the meaning, which then when we speak their name, we know what it means. Totally. It's almost like a cuss word. If I were to say the F word, yep. you can interpret it however your upbringing or what you heard about that word. Yeah. Because it could mean something good yep. or it could mean something bad. Yep. It's just the meaning that you've created around it. Right. And that's what I'm saying. So again, that when you look at a word, that it has no meaning other than the ones that we give it. But when you really start to look at it for what it means, it brings some insight. And so when we started naming our kids, we yeah. knew the power of the words. And so we wanted to ensure that when we were saying their name, Aslan, Nixon, Zion, that there was an embodiment of this is what it means. This is what we're speaking over you. This is the power of this. So if we're going to say your name 11 times a day, I want it to mean <laughs> sometimes 30 or sometimes, 40. Did you say, I was going to say 11,000 and I was like, okay, don't exaggerate. I was literally going to say 11,000 times 11. Uh, we wanted it to have power. Yeah. But that's really the essence of it. Is words that bring life. That the words bring life and words can create death and we're, I mean, they matter. Um, so that's so kind of where so we. So let's get into okay, let's this. Get into so, it. Okay. Uh, what let's start with what we heard okay growing up so what is a phrase that you heard growing up that over a period of time you had an awakening and you're like okay I'm not gonna say that Mm -hmm. word or phrase anymore because you were getting the fruit in your life from saying that or just the awareness of like oh wow how strong words matter. I'm not going to say that because I don't want that result. Yeah. Why don't you start? Uh, we can't afford that. Mm. So that's, that, that was a, you know, heard it, you know, quite a few times growing up. We can't afford that. Okay. So for everybody listening, think about it. When was the last time you heard yourself say, I can't afford that Yep. or we can't afford that. If you have kids, you, you say, you know, you're at the grocery store and they ask for something. You say, oh, we can't afford that. Mm. What, so what did that do to you? I'm curious, as a kid. I don't think as a kid I really, you know, I was like, okay. I didn't understand until I, until I started learning, like, okay, like, what, what does that mean? Like, we can't afford it. Yeah. As opposed to, like, how can we afford it? Okay. 
so I couldn't tell you specifically when I was like, oh, I'm going to change that. Uh, I back up. So I read um, Millionaire Mind, yeah. T. Harvecker, mm -hmm. and he actually gives an example of like, have a conversation with me for five minutes and I'll tell you where you're going yeah. and how powerful certain, especially money yeah. words yep. are. Um, and so I think that was, that was probably, but that was later. There, there's got to be an earlier point where I was like, I want to think about how can I? Yeah. And maybe that's when I got a job. I was like, okay, we yeah. we can't afford that or you can't afford that, yeah. which is fine. Yep. But how can I afford that? Yeah. So yes. I need to go make money to afford whatever I want. For sure. So maybe that's the, that was kind of the evolution, the evolution of like, of it. I'm going to go get a job when I'm 15. Yep. So I can, I can have whatever Yeah, I want. well, it's interesting that you say that because... I was just talking to someone a month ago who said we were talking about all this concept of dreaming and you know a lot of people are pinging us now just saying tell me more and what do you mean and and I said so I'm, I'm sharing with her the vision and why we believe in dreaming and all that and she says well we just we can't afford to do that right like my husband works and we we have to pay our bills and we have our mortgage and we have all the things that life brings with it like we couldn't afford to do that and instantly it's so funny that you're even saying this I was like what do you mean you, the minute you say, I can't afford this, you know what it does? Oh, it just stops you it from stops even you. thinking creatively it, or outside of the box or how can we? So it's really yes. shifting it. And that's, that, that's what this podcast is about today yep. is just, okay, here's the word that you may have heard or that you say, and now what can you fill in there as opposed to we can't afford it yep. on how can we? One is death. Yep. Basically, yeah. you shut it down. You're not. You're not even going to think about it because you can't. Yeah. So, and let's let's unpack this a little bit more. Because if I'm saying, well, we just can't afford it. Basically, what I'm doing is now that's my reason. That's my excuse. That's my justification. That's my truth. Right. It doesn't mean it is true. Right. And I think that you've even said this before. Is that if someone else can afford it, why can't I? Right. Like there's reality. If someone else has it, if someone else is doing it, it means it's possible right? Like it's, it's available. If someone else is buying it, someone else is doing it. Someone else has created the financial ability to do that. So it doesn't mean it's impossible, but if you keep saying, I can't afford this, I can't afford this, I can't afford this. It all of a sudden sets a limit. It puts a limit on top of what you're actually capable of. What is possible What's for possible. you. Yeah. It becomes the truth. So guess everything I see then is within the confines of, well, I can't afford this because all I can afford is that. And now I'm going to start settling. Then all your actions back that up. All of your actions. That's the power of, again. Even while you're watching TV for four hours a night. Yeah. Because totally. you can't afford it. So why even do anything about it? Yep. As opposed to getting a side hustle or creating an online business or doing something that adds value for the people around you to make money. Yes. So instead of, rec so I think first, again, it's always recognizing that this is what I'm saying, mm -hmm. how uh, that we can't afford it, then it's to be able to go, okay, do I want to afford it? That's what I would suggest, right? Do I really actually want to know how to afford it, right? If someone else can afford it, do I want to know what they know? Do I want to understand what they understand, right? Like they know something I don't know. So the question really, I think has to be, do I want to know what they know? And then if you do, if you want to know how to afford it, then I think you shift into that of question of, okay, then how can I afford this? Do I need to get a side hustle? Do I need to stop doing the job that I'm doing? Do I need to stop hanging out with the people I'm hanging out with? Do I need to actually understand money, right? Do I need to stop spending so much money over there? Cause I actually make a lot and I'm just, my priorities are misaligned. So it's not that I can't afford it. I'm just buying all this other stuff that I don't really want to keep up with the Joneses or the people that make me feel better when it's not even what I want, right? It's just an allocation of my money it could be right I mean, like, some people make enough money to afford what they really want but their money's tied up because the commitments that they made whether it's the mortgage the houses all you the know, other credit stuff, card debt keeping up yeah. yeah the things that they thought mattered yeah doesn't matter for sure and so then yeah you can't afford that and it's currently maybe yeah. you can't afford it right now yep. and that's okay there's been situations where it's like i want x and we can't this, afford it and, and or it doesn't make sense right now. Yep. So then how can we? Yes. What what goals? What it's not that I can't ever. It's in this what moment. What do I need to do? Who yep. do I need to become to be able to afford to do whatever it is I want to totally. do? Totally. And there's a Love process. It. It's not just yeah, I, I can't afford it 
as opposed to what was I going to say? So, so the process is okay. Here's what I want, and I think I mean we could probably do a whole podcast on this. Just you know, looking at financially too, of yeah. like where where am I spending money that I don't need to be spending money? Yeah. What what have I always had interest in that I could learn? Then I could give that value to other people totally. and charge them for yep. it yep. and but to make more money. I think the whole point though is one's going to shut you down <clears throat> and one's going to open you up. Yeah. One's going to speak death. One's going to speak life. One's going to keep you where you are. One's going to take you to where you've never been. And the reality then just comes down to, if you find yourself saying this and if it's getting you the results that you want, fine, keep saying it. If it's not getting you the results that you want, then we would suggest, how can I? It's not getting you the results. It's not. No. It's really not. I mean, anytime, if you want something and you say, I can't afford it, if it's, it may, maybe it's something you don't want, or maybe it's something that your kid, like at the grocery store, it's like, I don't, I never say that to our kids yeah. because I'm not going to say we can't afford that. I just say, no, I'm not yeah. going to give a justification or an excuse. And, um, even if we can or can't afford it, that never comes. We never say that. Never. I would agree. Okay. So that's a good one along the same lines is we don't have time for that. Yeah. Oh, man. I just heard a girlfriend say that yesterday. And I looked at her. I don't have her. time. You're like, oh, really? She says, oh, Julie, I don't have time for that. And as soon as she was saying it, she looked up and knew who she was saying it to. <laughs> <laughs> and you could tell she was like, take it back. Take it back. But it was out there. Yes. Okay, good. I'm glad you said that one. Because it, I, I don't mean, have it, enough time. Yeah. And this is where this is so true as well. Tell me what you do on a daily, weekly basis, mm -hmm. and I guarantee you have time. So here's the cool part about time. This is where I feel like we as people can start to justify the means in which someone's growing up with, right? Like, well, they had an easier go, or they grew up with this family, or, you know, they live here, or whatever it is. And that's, that's part of probably human nature, right? But here's where I think that God was like, let's just keep the playing field equal is that all of us every single one of us right from the person that is begging on the side of the road to uh, apple which just yesterday i heard in the news is the first or second trillion two trillion dollar company mm -hmm. okay so th all of these people in between have the exact same amount of time in a given day 24 hours it has nothing to do with where they started has nothing to do with where they live none of it right and we that could go on and on there could be so many opinions around that but the reality is we all have the exact same amount of time in our day 24 it's just hours where you spend your time where you choose to spend your yeah, time that's what I'm saying where you spend your time yes it's but I that's the big difference yeah. of someone that you know and it doesn't necessarily even have to be financially it's like oh man i'd love to be with my kids more but i don't have time well you do you do it's where you're choosing this is to put I, it's yeah, a choice it's a choice we don't be a victim of your own choices yes we choose and this is a hard one to swallow at first right because we're the ones that are creating busy we're the ones that are creating our schedule. We're the ones that are in avoidance. We're the ones that aren't looking at what we want most. And so at first, I will agree that this is a hard one to swallow because it's so easy to go, yeah, but you don't understand. This, I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to be here and I have to go there and I have to, have to, have to, right? Which is why I don't have time. And so what we do is we start to blame, right? As well, then you're, yeah. Are you saying like you're the victim based yeah. off of what you signed up for? Yep. So if you have kids and you have them in different sporting things yep. and then the school activities and then, you know, your work stuff and then you want to work out and then you got to watch your favorite shows yep. at certain time. Well, now you can record them, but you still got to spend the time watching the shows. Yeah. So it's like you sign up for all of these things and then you're like, oh man, I'm just exhausted. I just don't have any time for whatever it is. Yep. And the reality is it's not that you don't have time. That again will be the tap. You can tap out. I don't have to take responsibility. I can blame it on something else. I don't have to get clear. I don't have to look at the hard things, right? Like uh, I read a quote the other day by Darren Hardy that says that busy is actually just a way to avoid the things that are hard and uncomfortable. It's just a mask that allows me to go, well, look at, I'm doing all these things and I'm so busy, so I can't do X, Y, and Z, the things I want most. It's really just a way to avoid doing the things that you want to be doing most. Yeah. 
right? Or, or someone the other day I, uh, sent me a quote because I was kind of talking about this whole concept and they sent me this quote that says, next time you say, I don't have time for this, try saying it's just not that important to me. It's not a priority. I mean, really, it's, it's, that's what you're saying. Yes. What, whatever it is, like, and, and we've seen it in um, situations, like even friends or whatever, like, oh, man, I just don't have time this week. And you're like, that's totally cool. I understand. Yeah. I'm just not a priority. Yes. Like, just, just say that. Just like, say hey, it. you're just not a priority this week because <laughs> I filled my schedule with all this other stuff. Like, that's what they're saying to you yes. because we all have the same amount of time in the day. So you filled, and maybe that week you have booked out, you know, three weeks in advance. Fair. Fair. And moving forward, though, if there's a disconnect as far as like, oh, I don't have time. Well, you keep adding stuff yep. to the next week and yep. the following week and the following week. Yep. So that's really what they're saying. So if you have a friend that says, oh, I just don't have time to get together this week or next week, they're just literally saying, you're just really not that important to me. <laughs> oh, sad. And I'll circle back around with you <laughs> when you are. Or, you know, I think it's even as saying like with our kids, right? Like, oh, I just don't have time to play with you right now. I mean, think about it and just use it as a checks and balance. It's just mm -hmm. not that important to me right now, right? Or I want to get up and do quiet time in the morning with God or go work out, you know, but I don't have time. So try saying, I don't have time. I, you know, I'm not going to get up tomorrow and pray because it's just not that important to me. I'm not going to get up and work out tomorrow because it's just not that important to me. And then feel yourself go, wait, yes, it is. It is important to me. We'll prove it then because yeah. you still have 24 hours. There's, you're the one that makes your schedule. You're the one that's conducting all these pieces, right? And it opens up, yes, a can of worms, right? Because maybe you have to look at your job and go, well, but my job, I don't even like these hours. Okay, then we might have to find a job that's more accommodating to the hours that you want to be working, Right. Or it might mean that you go to bed a little bit later so you can work out or you wake up a little bit earlier so you can have time with God. But I think when you create this like hard, fast ability within yourself to say, no, it's not that I don't have enough time. It's just that I'm not taking ownership for how I'm spending my time. Yeah. And I think a lot of people and we've been there at a certain point of our life where you let comfort mm -hmm. kill your dreams. Yeah. So if you like going to bed at eight or nine o'clock or 10 o'clock and waking up at seven, eight or nine o'clock, whatever that is, you're letting that comf comfort yeah. become kind of, that's like your, your norm. So yeah. changing that and getting one hour or two hours or three or four hours less sleep yep. and doing something yeah. or watching normally and I forget the statistic on how much TV people watch. Yeah, or how much we're on social media and YouTube. Yeah, yeah. well, and the night, like with your phones, it's like it, it tells you your screen time. Yes. And there's been times where it's like, I'll listen to a lot of, uh, you know, stuff while I'm driving and yeah. stuff. But it's interesting as it pops up, you're like, wow, really? Yeah. Like my phone was doing something on or playing something yep. for that amount of time. Yes. And so I think it's it's really just awakening of like, okay, am I just comfortable yep. and what I'm saying I want, yeah. I really just don't want because yeah. I'm not willing to give up that extra hour of sleep yep. or the TV or tell my kids, hey, you know, we're only going to do one activity. Yep. We're not going to do four different sports yep. and, you know, all throughout the year, we're going to trim it back so we can create some of the things that we want to as a family yeah. that's important yep. that's going to take precedent which is spending time together yep. going hiking or camping or yep. having uh, some more quality yeah time. quality time yep. instead of like you're there but you're not because you're running them around and dropping them off and picking them up and going yep. here and going there and then at the end of the night it was like i was with you but yep. i wasn't really with you there's no sure. connection for sure well and i think that you know part of this is kind of like if you look at the result of that like every time i say to myself oh i don't have time for that it's like such it's so anxiety ridden you know what i'm saying like so many people are talking about how stressed out that they feel and how anxious you feel right like if you struggle with stress and anxiety right now i honestly want you to do a self check a gut check and ask yourself how many times am i saying to myself i don't have enough time i don't have enough time i don't have enough time i can't afford this right like those create so much anxiety and stress that it's self-induced right mm -hmm. like it's not it's not that the world isn't giving you more time you know you have to choose what you want to do with your time and so part of our anxiety and stress is built upon 
these thoughts. I don't Mm -hmm. have enough time. I don't have enough time, which is like, now I'm buzzing. Now I'm spinning. Now I'm wreaking havoc on my family because they're in the way, right? Like they're now getting in in the way of the most important things when you forget like, no, they are the most important things. Yeah. Right. So it's like this anxiety builds and now we're making anxiety based decisions. And so on and on and on only to feel more anxious and more stressed and more anxious and more stressed. And like we have less and less time and we're getting less and less done. We're the self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. It's crazy. So, okay, I have, do you have one. one. Yeah. I will win. I will win. I will when win. When I get there. When I have. When I have more money than I will. When my schedule is, you know, makes a little bit more sense. When um, my spouse is fully supporting. When the stars align. When, when I, then I, right? It's like this, it's like this never ending bunny trail of waiting for the perfect time and the perfect time never comes. No, it's like giving yourself, it's a, it's a way out, but it's giving yourself hope without accountability. Oh man, that's so good. And we've done that. So there was a a time we wanted to travel in an RV since we got married, we actually went, before we got married, we went to go put a deposit on an RV. Yep. I had a good job Yeah. and we were going to quit at a certain time. Yeah. And we gave this example in one of the podcasts, but it's, it's, we were, we did that exact same thing. Well, yeah. when we get here, then we will. Yeah. And so 10 years later, 10 years after going through the process and when this happens or when this happens and you, and you, you keep stretching it out. You keep setting the bar higher of, okay, now, you know, like, uh, okay, when we have this amount of money, then we'll do it. And then you're like, Oh, we don't have enough money. Let's okay. When we get this amount of money, then we'll do it. Yes. So there became a point in our life too, traveling in an RV where it was like enough is enough. Like we had that midlife awakening of like, no, we're not going to keep doing it. We have to start living intentionally living now. Yeah. And that's when we jumped in the RV and and traveled the first time because we had to break that habit and pattern for ourselves of like, no, we're going to do it now because there is isn't never enough time. Because then we started having more kids and it's... Because the bar you set, it's like input, right? Like we will when we have more time to our last point, right? There's quote unquote never enough time, right? So we'll keep pushing that back. I will when I make more money, only I'm kind of adjusting how much I'm spending. So it's like my threshold never quite gets there, right? Mm -hmm. Like I will when, and then COVID happens, right? I will when, and then the market changes. I will when. And so we have all these other external factors. So the problem is not setting a date, right? Like I believe, and we'll unpack this a little bit, right? Because I think that there is responsibility in setting dates and having accountability and making sure that you're working backwards. And there's a lot of moving pieces in a lot of our lives. So we'll kind of create a division here on what we actually mean. But it's when you're casting this to your point, it's like this hope idea with no accountability around it, Mm -hmm. right? It's like this, oh, I'm going to put off tomorrow what I actually need to be doing today. Yeah, I'm going to, you have to be planting seeds now. So once you identify what it is you want, yep. you have to start. Yes. It could be, um, a week or a month or, or even a year yep. before you can do what you really want yeah. because you need to, because of the decisions you made in the past has committed you for a certain amount of time, whether it's financially or time commitment. Yep. So now you have to start to like deconstruct that. Yeah. So then you can reconstruct exactly what you want. Yeah. Yep. And so, yeah, there is a process to it. It is yeah. not just like when, when I get there, then I'll do that. It is to a certain extent of like, okay, when I, when I, what do I want? Right. Working backwards. What do I need to do? Who do I need to become? And then moving forward in a totally different way. Yeah. But just saying, oh, when, when I, not having a game plan around yes, it is what I'm saying. What if you don't do. have there a game is. plan around it financially and time yep. and being on the same page with your, your spouse and, you know, making a commitment of like, here's what we're going to do and here's what we need to stop doing yep. and here's what we need to start doing yep. to be able to get this when we say we're going to. Yeah. Most of the difference is here's how you know that you're saying it and it is just an, an out, right? If you say, if you were to sit down and say, okay, 
we're going to do this. We will do this when we get here. And here's how this is going to look. And you actually have a game plan. You have it written down. You have the things you're going to change, the things you're going to add, the things that you need to know, the things that you need to learn, right? And if that doesn't happen or if it takes long, like you have a well thought out plan. That's different than just when I get there, then I will, but not changing anything anything in between, right? Like continuing to do the same thing, thinking that, well, when I, like this, I'll give you a couple examples. When I make more money, then I'll tithe. No, you won't. Because if you don't know how to tithe off of $10 and you can't give a dollar away, when you make $100,000, like you're not going to just sign a check for 10 grand, you know, because you'll be like, oh no, right? Like, or when I have more time, then I'll work on my dreams. No, because if you can't work on your dreams five minutes a day, you're not going to work on your dreams full time, right? Or, you know, um, when I um, am 35, then I, well, when I'm 70, then I, when I retire, that's a better example. When I retire, then I'll start to travel the country. And pursue, and yeah. And pursue the things I want. Yep. Then you, I'm, you know, I, no offense, but then you get to be 70 and you're old and it, your body hurts and it aches and you get more tired. I mean, I hear my aunts and uncles saying this now that they're like, oh, all I wanted to do is travel, but now my body hurts and... Well, then they make an excuse then of why an they're excuse not. Why they're not. And so you're like, wait, so you waited 70 years to do it and now you're 70 and you're saying that you... Are in you're too, too much pain. tired. You're too tired too. And so now what we're doing is we're putting off living, right? Like I'm putting off figuring out if I want to pursue the life of my dreams, if I want to make more money, I'm not going to wait until then to start doing it. I'm going to say, if that's what I want, how do I do this today? Right? Like if I want to travel the country in an RV, what is the step I need to take today to start doing that? Right? If I want to be fit and healthy, what is something that I need to do today? If I want to have more time to hang with my kids, what is it that I need to do in this moment right now? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. Take what it is that you want. Don't even put it off a week or a month. Ask yourself, what do I need to do today to get this done? Maybe it's only 20 minutes with your kid, but maybe you haven't spent 20 minutes of focused attention in a long time. So start with 20 minutes, right? If it's a, I want an RV, what kind? I don't know. Well, have you gone and sat in one? How many times no. have we done that? Yes. Like we shop for RVs almost probably for 10 years. We'd go to the big oh my gosh, uh, conventions hours. down there and walk hours. all of them. I mean, we looked at every kind of make and model. We looked, I mean, for years and years and years. So when it became a, a you know, like, you no, knew. we're going to do this because we are so irritated with, yeah. you know, we us lying to ourselves. We, we were lying to ourselves. But then at that point, right, then you know what you're looking for. You know the prices. You can, you've shopped around. You know when a good deal pops up. You know the mm-hmm. color. You know the make. You know all of that, so right? That's, so you're ready. that's our next podcast. Go test drive your dream. Go try your, yes. your dream. Love so it. whether it's you know where you want to live, a house, a, a car that you want, or a job or whatever, like go test drive it. Yep. Don't so, wait. When I get there, then I will. Yeah. Stop saying that. What I want you to say today is mm-hmm. not when I get there, then I will. I want you to say, here's what I want. Own it. Here's what I want, and what can I do today, right now, to make space and time? We already talked about the time thing. You do have time if it's ten minutes. I don't have time to work out. You've got 10 minutes, mm-hmm. right? Because how many have... times have like, you know, whether it's friends or family, they've been talking about the same thing of what they're going to do. For so long. For so long. For so long. So make the time. We already talked about that so that you can't hide behind that one. Make the time to do it today. If you want to try it, if you want to look for a new job, you don't like your job, start looking today. What can you do today? If you want to lose weight, walk 10 minutes, right? If you would, doesn't matter what it is. Just stop saying, when I get there, then I will. And start saying, what is the one thing that I want? And what is one thing I can do today to start moving in that direction? And then guess what? Do it every day. Mm-hmm. Every single day. Because now what you're doing is you're making your dreams not about when I get there. You're making about today. You're bringing them into your today. So let's let's talk about because there's probably we could go in depth on on a lot more of these. So I'm going to tie a couple together because they're they're similar but different. So one of the things that we heard was I wish I could do that. Mm. And you're lucky. Oh, good. So we heard that a lot when we traveled RV. Yeah. You know, we traveled RV two different times. One, first time with two kids, second time with three kids. And when we would go into the RV parks and be talking to people, we ran into, you know, a decent amount of people. Majority of them were older, mm-hmm. retired. Mm-hmm. Um, 
there is definitely a movement of, you know, kind of the conversion vans yeah. and people living out of that and working remotely. Um, and then we'd run into people that were kind of the, the weekend warriors. Yeah. Um, and that they would be up there and be like, oh my gosh, I wish I could do that. Or yeah. you're so lucky. And you're yeah. like, no. Yeah. Because you have no idea the sacrifices and all the things that we did in preparation. And this wasn't like an overnight yeah. thing. It was, you know, 10 years for that example. It was many years in the making and letting go of mm -hmm. that whole belief of when I get there. Because we didn't really, one, we probably didn't believe in it. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't think it was possible. It was just on our vision board. Yep. And so I think that a lot of people, they look at other individuals that are successful. Yeah. And they're like, oh, they're so lucky. But if you knew what they did on a daily, weekly basis, the sacrifices that they make yeah. to get what they have, you see the fruit. You don't see the time and effort and energy yeah. that they had to the root of it to, to be where they're at. Okay, so let's, because I have a totally different spin on that, but I think that both are really valid. So here was my spin when someone would say like, because I've had a couple people in the last year reach out and go, oh my gosh, you're so lucky to have done an RV. How in the world did you do that? And this is what went through my head, but I love what you're saying. But went through my head was, it's actually not that hard to get yourself in a position to do this. It doesn't cost that much more money than you're probably already spending, right? Like when we looked at everything, when it was all said and done, the amount of money that we were spending in a home with all of our stuff and all the activities and all the things that you do, and then you looked at how much we were spending from just gas and travel and some excursions, it was pretty much the same, right? Mm -hmm. And so that transition of just month to month is not that hard. I think we make it out to be something bigger. Like you and I are no different. That's what I kept wanting to tell people. Like we're no different. And it doesn't matter how old your kids are, how young your kids are, if you have kids or no kids. Like it's just a decision. If you really want to do it, you can do this. And so it's interesting that when you hear some go, oh, that's so lucky. I wish I could do it. It may not be as hard as you've made it out in your head to be, is my thought. Or... <laughs> The polar opposite to what I hear you saying is, do you want what I have in my hand or do you want what I have in my heart, right? Like, are you willing to do the journey to be successful or do you just want to be successful? Yeah. Are you willing? Yeah. Are you willing to go through the process that I went, we yes. have gone through yes. to live the yep. life that we're living? Yep. So let's talk about both really quick. So the first idea is you're lucky or I wish I could do that. It may not be that hard for you to do what you want to do. I mean, that's the reality. The heart, the, the thing that stops us is just that I can't, right? And like sometimes the scariest thing is getting, you know, what you want ultimately yes, because it's, it's, you can hide behind, well, you know, I don't have time or, or they're so lucky, but I can't have that. But it, sometimes getting really what you want, depending on how you grew yeah. up and your limiting beliefs and your environment and all that, if you start really like going after owning and getting yep. and owning what you want, you'd be surprised that it's it's probably like you're saying not as hard and not far you're not far off you're from far. living into and out of what you really want it's just letting yourself you know yeah. like the stars like i just believe that god wants what we want like if it's in me that i really want it that like he's already positioned favor and flow and ease and grace and resources and people and it's just me letting me have what i want and so on one hand if you're really looking at something in your life that you go, oh man, they're so lucky or I wish I could do that, you may be able to if you just let yourself. Really. It may not be that hard. When you start asking for help, when you start reaching out, when you start looking for things, when you start paying attention, you may just be a few dominoes away. It may just be the belief that, oh no, I, I can if I just let myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want to speak to that point. It may not be that hard. Go find a few people that are doing it and just ask them. Right? Like when these people called and they were like, how did you make the RV happen? I shared a couple insights. They were like, great. Like bing, bang, boom. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. didn't think of that. I didn't realize it was that easy. You're completely right about that. Like I'm, I'm literally a few dominoes, a few decisions away from having exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Now to your point, we look at people who are successful. We look at marriages that are well connected. We look at someone who's really fit. We look at people who are creating a, a really big impact and we think, oh, I want what they have. And I think what you were saying is, do you want what they have? And if so, are you willing to journey? Are you willing to go down the path that they went down to have it? Yeah. Do you want what's in their hand or do you want what's in their heart? Yeah. 
Like, expect, physically, it's easy, you know, like a lot of people you probably relate to. Someone that's physically fit, you know they eat good yep. and they work out. I mean, that's yeah. it's pretty easy. And, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like working out, so it kind of prohibits them right away. Yes. And then food, you have to eat better food and maybe how you grew up or you think eating healthy is way harder than it is yeah. and it's gross. Yes. Now it's like, it's so easy it is. to eat healthy yes. yep. and it's, you know, working out wise, the science behind working out has changed dramatically. Totally. You know, every body type is different. Understand that. And at the same time, it's like, you don't have to work out for hours a day. Yeah. That was like, you know, back yeah. in the eighties and yeah. you know, nineties, it was like, you work out, a, you know, a lot. And I went through that phase. I remember in high school, like I'd spend, you know, hours at the gym mm -hmm. and I didn't have to, cause I, I just didn't, one, I didn't understand, yep. but two, it's evolved. Yeah. And really what, what do you want? You know, yeah. you look at someone that's like crazy fit, they do competitions and that that's their passion. That's what they love. You're probably not going to do that. Maybe yep. you'll step into that, but it's just the first step. Totally. Let's just start eating a little bit better and yeah. moving my body. Yeah. And then you feel better and then you're like, okay, I'm going to start gaining yeah. more knowledge yeah. to work out and eat better even more to that next level yep. and to the next level. And, and then it becomes second nature. And that's the key, right? As you just said, it's the knowledge. Do I want the knowledge? Like I don't want to just be like get healthy and then sabotage. I want to get healthy and I want to know why I'm getting healthy. Like I want to enjoy the journey of becoming a better person. I want to mm -hmm. enjoy the journey of becoming healthier. I want to become, I want to enjoy the journey of becoming a wealth mindset type of person so that when I get there, I stay there. And I think that this comes down to a choice. Pick your heart. Hashtag. Here's another hashtag for us. <laughs> hashtag pick your heart. Yeah. Like, well, and that comes, I'm going to, uh, we'll kind of go back and forth, but that's, this is another thing that I hear people say. Yeah. Um, and that, I, that I've, I've probably said in the past is that I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. Well, you didn't know how to walk either. <laughs> and you figured that out. You didn't know how to drive a car and you went through a process and you figured that out. Yeah. I don't know how to use the internet. Well, that's great. There's classes and workshops. Like mm -hmm. you can have someone help you figure that out. Yeah. So I don't know how to anymore. The how to's are out there. Yeah. And that's, that's what we've talked about too. Yeah. It's like the how to's are out there, which are great. Yeah. You need that within a combination of understanding your limiting beliefs yeah. and your patterns and your truths that you've created for yourself yeah. that are not true. Yeah. Um, they're lies that are prohibiting you from living your dreams. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. And I think that that's why, you know, that even that hashtag pick your heart is that it's, it's hard to learn something new and it's hard to stay where you are, right? It's hard to be fat and it's hard to be fit, right? It's hard to have no money. It's hard to have money. It's hard to be married. It's hard to be single, right? Like there's a hard to everything. So if we're trying to find the path of least resistance, we're never going to be proud. It's a quote from Tony Robbins that I love, right? The path of least resistance will never make you proud, mm -hmm. right? Where you're going to be proud. And what we're saying is just pick the hard that you want most, right? Because people go, well, it's not hard to have money. Well, then maybe you haven't had it because there's a lot of decisions that go around making more money, well, right? And managing, being, your money, managing your money, protecting your money, protecting your money, understanding how to spend it, right? When you become healthier, like the, it is hard to look, there's a lot to learn, but once you learn it, it becomes a little bit more easier to understand as you go through the journey, right? It's yeah. hard to work for someone else. It's hard to start your own business. Like it's hard to have no kids. It's hard to have a lot of kids. Like, so really it, it's like, just pick your heart. Yeah. Pick until it becomes, like you said, until it becomes Second nature. Second nature. I mean, it, and you look, and it's easy to compare, look at someone else and be like, you know, they, they're again, they figured it out. They, from an outside perspective, have everything, yeah. you know, whether it's monetary or they're in good shape or have a great marriage. And they went through the process yes. to be able to get that. Yeah. And I think it's easy to look at something as the result, the yeah. end result, yeah. but not understanding like, Anybody that first starts something, you're going to feel insecure. You're yeah. going to feel stupid. You're yeah. going to have all these emotions that come up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what is it? Every every master was once a disaster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like you, you have to understand that. It's like just part of the process um, to, to becoming 
what you want and yeah. I think we talked about that yeah. a little bit as far as like comparing and yeah. um, which can kill your dreams kill right dreams. away but I think that's a good question so if you find yourself asking I don't know how then I think you immediately just need to ask yourself okay but do I want to know how yeah like do I honestly want to know how well yeah I do yeah. okay then prove it you know like yep. now I have to take the steps I have to act a little insecure and call someone who knows more I've got to get on Google and read things 300 times until I start to really absorb it. Like I need to take the steps, but I think instead of just hiding behind, well, I don't know, or I don't know how, right? That's just an avoidance strategy of, of prolonging something that you really probably need to look at, mm -hmm. right? We just pawn it off. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Or I don't know how, I don't know how. So what we're doing is we're just like pawning off the it's responsibility. It's a dream killer right there. Yeah. I don't know how. So you don't even get started. You don't even you get know. started. Yeah. As opposed the to go, do I want to know? And if the answer is yes, I want to know. I want to know how to have a passionate relationship. I want to know how to start my own business. I want to know how to go to the next level. Great. It's, it's just time. the first step. It's just the first step. You just want to Is even... the hardest yes. step most often. Yeah. These are so good. So here here is Let's do one more. One more. Yep. Um so we've talked about this. Let's do let's do maybe two more. Um so thank God it's Friday. <laughs> Um, and then oh, the other one is so just killing time. Oh, that's really, we could wrap that all in one. Right yeah, there. that's what okay, I'm saying. Good. So okay. it's, it's almost like, you know, especially you hear that a lot on people that have jobs yeah. that don't love their that's job funny. and that, but they chose, you know, they chose to do it. So we've heard, I've heard that mm -hmm. quite a few times where you're like, you can see if someone's bored at a yeah. job mm -hmm. and they're like, Oh, you know, 30 more minutes, just killing some time here. And you're like, Oh man. So do you know who I love on this topic? Jesse Itzler. He's got, you know, he's this oh, whole yeah. idea of build your life resume. And he, he says, you know, if, if the average male lives, I think it's 72 to 78 years. Don't quote me on this. We'll, we'll tag Jesse Itzler and you can go read some of his stuff. Let's just say for the example that the average male lives 78 years. The way Jesse starts to break it down is that means you have 78 summers. That means you have 78 Christmases. That means that if you have a three-year-old right now, that in theory, if they only stay with you till you're 18, you only have 15 more Christmases with your baby. Like he breaks it down to where you're like, oh my gosh, like if your parents real. are 75 years old and you're like, dang, I got to go to Christmas with my parents one more time. You have three more Christmases with your parents. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right. And here, what we're looking at is, oh, I'm just killing time or. Or just putting in my time. That's the other yeah. one too. Just putting in my time, in my you know, time. and they, you know, laugh about it of like, you or know. Thank God I've it's got... Friday. What if you only have seven more Fridays? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, thank God it's Monday. Thank yeah. God it's Tuesday. Thank God it's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And this, this goes back into some of the things that we were talking about. It's like, it's, what is the priority? What it's your choice that you filled out the application, did the interview and accepted the job. And this is most of the time, this is what we yeah. hear Yep. This is what I hear this in. And you're like, thank God it's Friday. I mean, thank why God not? Thank God it's every day. Uh, today. today. You woke up and you're alive and you get to choose to go to a job that you like or dislike. You get to choose to yeah. start a business. You have that choice. Yeah. And I just feel like, oh, you know, we've drawn some light on this consciousness around this because we've started to hear it a lot from people. Mm -hmm. And it almost just makes me sad because... If I'm just putting in my time or like, oh, it's Monday and I'm living for the weekend, which is why all of us, we just party all weekend long, right? Or then we're just kind of continuing to do the things that we're not even experiencing our life. And then, man, it's Monday again. And then Wednesday's hump day. And then Friday, like, thank God it's Friday. You're like, how sad. Like, you're not, you're settling for okay, fine, average, even mediocre, mm -hmm. waiting for a weekend, and most of the time when you say that, like to your point, you either, if you're younger, you may party a lot, drink a lot. Um, you may do things that are not, you know, that, that are instant gratification. Are, yeah. So for two days, I want to check I'm going to sleep. I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'm going to drink. drink. I'm going to, you know, do the things that bring me what you think is joy or yeah. fulfillment because you're really just trying to check out knowing you yes. have to go back on Monday. Yes. Okay, so here's what we're doing. I don't like the job, which I'm already kind of checked out because I can't wait till Friday. Then I go and I entertain myself with other ways to check out. That's yeah. what we're doing. So now I'm really checking out seven days a week. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Of the one life that I get, and then I just keep 
doing it over and over and over again. Which then it spills into, I don't have time. I don't have, I don't have enough money. I don't have, enough I don't money. have those because you, you don't because the... I will win. Yeah, when I get wherever because yeah. you're not because you're on this hamster wheel of Monday through Friday, not liking what you do, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, f- f- you know, doing things that make you check out, like you yeah. said, once again. So you, you never... You're just on this vicious cycle. Oh man, like that one of all of them breaks my heart just because I feel like there could be so many other follow-up things that are going on. Well, you don't understand about this and I have to have this job and I have to, and there's so many other things, but the, I think the majority of what I could summarize with that concept is that life is too short to be settling in these areas of our lives that are causing us to wait for Friday or be bummed about a Monday or be checking out, you know, with our different extracurricular activities that we're choosing to do. Like we're missing the essence of life. Like Mm -hmm. we're missing the application of me in a life that I love and that I'm proud of. And like, again, going back to pick your heart. Yes. It's hard to clarify what you want. It's hard to identify what you want to do with your life and where you want to spend your time and who you want to spend your time with. And it's hard to live aware and it's hard to chase your dreams, but so is the heart of a job that you don't like and waiting for Friday and drinking all weekend or like that's hard. Or waiting for retirement. I've been in both. Like we've been in both sides, right? Like we've been in both sides. And so I feel like when for me, and I'm not trying to say like, this is just hard and now I have to have a hard life, but like kind of almost awakening that thing on the inside of you of like, okay, pick it then. What are the things that I want most? Because if it's going to be, if one hard is going to get me great, everything that I want, and one heart is going to get me just more hard and nothing that I want. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Another one that is right in line with this is sarcastically saying, live in the dream. Yeah. So it's like, if you say these words, we, I challenge you, I encourage you to rethink it, to yeah. sit back and say, why am I saying this? Yeah. And if you don't understand and you don't, and then you can say, well, I don't even know where to start to, to help change these. I'm going to say, go to the Dream Factory and Co. Yeah. And do a six, our six-week course yep. because it's just the awakening to understand yeah. some of your thoughts and patterns and the truths that you've created for yourself that are not true yeah. they're just your truth yep. and being, you gotta replace it you gotta replace it with something else yeah. and, and being surrounded with other people that are figuring this out too as yeah. we are as well yeah. as the ne- as we go to the next level and try new things and even the podcast like we didn't know how to do a podcast and we're still figuring it out yep. but we're on step three or four now five or five. No, I'm saying step, oh. <laughs> not not the actual Episode. podcast. Yeah, but it's like we're still figuring it out. We're still, as of today, figuring out our logo for the podcast. But we want to get started, so we're not saying, "Well, we can't start a podcast because we don't actually have the logo for it." We're we're getting started, knowing that we're figuring it out as we go, yep. and what is now what it looks like and everything that we're doing will be different in Mm -hmm. six months from now in two years from now and we're just going to get better than where we started yep and it's just understanding now we're aware of that of like we can't expect to be a black belt in podcasting when (laughs) (laughs) when we're just getting started you know i'm still trying to put on my gi i think it's on backwards actually (laughs) but it's you know in anything in life you know it's you can't expect to be at the end without going through the process because you need that mentally physically spiritually to be able to handle and sustain whatever that may be for you yep so But I'm glad that we talked this out, right? I'm glad that we created some space to talk about some of the biggest things that we hear people say and that we've said that stop you from your entry point, right? Like this is part of the battle, right? Like if I could say a fourth of the battle is just these for identifying the first initial thoughts that are keeping you, then the next is then you go into clarity and then we do all the things. But like if you can catch your words and you can see that words matter and you can see the power of our words that life or death is in the power of your words... And you realize that, you know what, I may not be able to control the economy. I may not be able to control other people. I can't control anything else. But what I can control is the thoughts that I think and the words that I speak. Now you're on to something. Yeah. Now you're on to something. Yep. And we'll add, I'm going to do, um, as I read different books, and I've had a bunch of books that uh, I've wanted mm-hmm. to go back and probably uh, read. And then I want to do a, a YouTube video. Yeah. But follow the YouTube channel too, because I'm going to do some on specifically on this as far as like, you know, the, uh, the mindset yeah. and just, you know, planting seeds. But I would highly recommend, you know, 
Go getting to, connected yeah. yep. and being around people that are wanting to do something yep. and be better yep. so they can call you out too. Because if you're hanging around the same people that are saying all the same things, saying the same things of like, you know, text in a group text, thank God it's Friday. Yeah, totally. Thank God it's Friday. You're probably not going to get out of that rat race. Yeah. And you need to be around new people that are going to challenge you and encourage you, but hold you accountable to stop saying some of those things that are, are killing your dreams yes. and killing the possibilities of what is um, possible waiting. for, yeah. yeah, what is waiting for you in life. Yeah. You, you, ha- you have to do something different than you've done up until this point point in life and most of the time it's it's who you surround yourself with yeah. you know you've got to get different perspective which includes what you're surrounding yourself with your own thought tank you know 100 I mean? like, if you don't you got to incorporate some new thoughts yeah so we we greatly appreciate you listening to our podcast and i'm just gonna sit here a couple more minutes and just keep my <laughs> arms around travis okay we'll see you next time <laughs> On behalf of both of us, thank you for listening to another episode of Dream On. Don't forget to visit our website, The Dream Factory and Co. for all the show notes and other tools and resources to get you unstuck, clear, and helping you reprogram your thoughts and beliefs so that you can live out your dreams with a community that supports and challenges you. Until next time, dream on.